even when it hurts, I will still worship. My worship is not contingent on my convenience and my comfort. Whether in the good times or the bad times, I will still worship. God the Father seeks true worshippers to worship Him. And therefore, it is very important for all believers to know how to become a true worshipper. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. A true worshipper is as opposed to a counterfeit, fake, pretentious, fictitious, but a genuine, real, and sincere worshipper. A true worshipper of God is an adorer of God, someone who loves God intensely. Let us consider these three points to know how to become a true worshipper. Number one, the heart of the worshipper. Becoming a true and sincere worshipper is not about the act of worship, what you can do in the place of worship, or what you call worship, but it's about the heart, your heart as the worshipper. God does not just seek worship from anyone. He said, I can raise the stones to praise me if you would not. So that is why it seeks worship from true worshippers, people who know what they are doing, people who are sincere, people who are genuine, who are not counterfeit and fake and pretentious people. These people honor me only with their words, for their hearts are very distant from me. They pretend to worship me, but their worship is nothing more than the empty traditions of men. Saying all the right things and having all the right words, performing or portraying all the right postures of worship does not make you a true worshiper. All the raising of hands and the bowing of the knees and the raising of voices and even the cries whatsoever posture you have, if your heart is not joined to God, you are not a true worshipper. You become a true worshipper when your heart is connected to God in a true relationship. Because your heart cannot be far from God and you call yourself a worshipper. When people raise their hands in worship and a good picture is taken, we can misconstrue and say, oh, that person was worshipping. Did your heart bow? And the bowing of your heart is not a one-time thing. It should be your way of life. That I have a bowed heart, a submitted heart, a devoted heart to worship God. Number two, the life of the worshiper. Worship is not about the fruit of your lips, but about the fruit of your life. By their fruit, ye shall know them. You cannot live a life that does not look like God and then call yourself a true worshiper of God. Because the true essence of of being a true worshipper of God is when your life portrays honor to God. Your life should reflect who you are as a true worshipper in your conduct, in your choices, in your relationships, in your career, in your obedience to God, in your submission to His will. Your life should reflect that you are a worshipper, that you sincerely adore God, that you love Him intensely and you can do anything to please Him. Just like a young man that might adore a young woman, you see him try Trying to please this young woman, impress her, trying to make her see him because he just wants to put a smile on her face. How can you put a smile on God's face when your life is not honoring to him? So the life of a true worshiper is the life of someone who is completely sold out to God. You have an intense desire to please God and to honor him with everything about you. Jesus said, let your life so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. So by the time men start seeing how good you are and how positive your life is having impact on theirs, they start thanking God. Thank God that I met this person. Thank God that our paths crossed. Thank God because of this person, I did not fall into that mistake. Thank God because of being a friend to this person, my life became better. I started walking wisely. That is a product of someone who is a true worshiper because your life is having a daily impact on people's life. Jesus said, when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. It's only true disciples of Jesus that can become true worshippers of God, which is a product of your life yielding to God. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind you will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. This is truly the way to worship him. It is when you you have given your body as a living sacrifice, which is you are living daily, sacrificing things that would have been gained to you to honor God. Because you're not living to please your flesh. You're not living to gratify your sexual desires. You're not living for you, but you're living to honor him. Like Paul said, the life that I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me 
and gave himself for me. The third point, understanding the essence of worship. As a true worshiper, you must understand what true worship looks like. Yes, it comes from a place of you as a person yielded to God. But when you come to God, when you want to pay homage to God, how is the posture and motive of your heart? What is the true nature of worship? You do not just worship God because of what he can do for you or what he has done for you. But you worship him because of who he is. He is the only one worthy of worship. He's worthy. He's worth all your worship. Because if you base it on what he has done or what he can do, when you ask of something or you desire something and it's not done, you may come to a place of feeling like, I don't have a reason to worship. That is why we do not attribute worship to God because of what he has done only. We attribute worship to him because of who he is. He is the creator, our maker. The fact that I can draw a bread, that's enough reason to worship God. That's enough reason. It's not about the achievement that you can have in this life. All your achievements count nothing if God is not pleased with your life. So the essence of true worship is not coming to God to worship him to give you something. It's coming to God to worship him because of who he is to you. Scripture says the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. It was Solomon coming to a place of all the things in this life, all the things that I've seen, all the things that I wanted, all the things that I tried to get. It couldn't fuel me. But the whole duty of man is to revere God. So instead of worshiping on the altar of men's idea, on the altar of money, of sex, of power, on the altar of your ambitions, of your dreams and purpose, you can worship God who is your maker. You can choose to enthrone God in your heart. By the time you idolize any other thing apart from God, that is your object of worship. Whether it's about your ambitions, whether it's marriage, but you can make God your one and only obsession. Because obsession to any other thing apart from God will always lead you astray and it will be unhealthy and destructive to your life. But your only true obsession should be to God alone. You want to please Him. You want to make Him proud. You want to live your life to honor Him alone. That is the true essence of worship. And you are not doing this to flatter him to do something for you because he cannot be flattered. You can say sweet words and swell men's head. You can't say it to swell God's. God knows your heart from the depth of it. Even the thing you want to say that you've not even said it. David said, you know my words before I even utter them. So you cannot use your words to try and flatter God. God is not flattered. He cannot be flattered. When you understand the true nature of worship you can come to a place of declaring that even when it hurts i will still worship even when i don't have all my desires met i will still worship even when i'm crying and i'm in pain i will still worship my worship is not contingent on my convenience and my comfort my worship is contingent on me giving and paying homage to my creator whether in the good times or the bad times i will still worship i hope this video has been beneficial to you and you enjoy the content i would like you to share your thoughts on how to become a true worshiper in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video to the end don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell check the next video and learn more about god thank you and see you in the next video